This is Natalie Marine Street, the Oral History Program Manager for the Stanford Historical Society. And I'm happy to be here today with the winners of the 2022 Susan W. Schofield Oral History Award, Michael Kahn and Nova Maurice. Their project, Urban Studies at 50, documents the origins and evolution of the Stanford Program on Urban Studies. It really impressed the selection committee uh, and we wanted to just have them share some more information about the project with us today. So can I ask each of you uh, to introduce yourselves and just tell us a little bit about you and how you came to Urban Studies? And we'll start with you, Michael. First of all, I'm, I'm very grateful to be uh, receiving the Schofield Award. So thank you very much. Uh, delighted to share a little about this project. So my name is Michael Kahn and I'm the co-director of the program on urban studies here at Stanford. And uh, so I've been working in the program on urban studies for about the last uh, 17 years now, 18 maybe it is now, uh, and I'm a historian by training. So I've always been interested in finding out more about the history of the program in which I work. So this was a really wonderful opportunity for me to dig into uh, the origins of the program, the development of the program, and to um, really kind of discover more about what, what uh, created the, the place that I have the, the great privilege to work in. Great, and Nova, how did you get involved in this? Yeah, um, so my name is Nova. I'm a fourth year complet student um, and I've taken a number of urban studies classes, but I am not uh, an urban studies major. Um, I guess I was interested in the space because I was involved in some student activism around housing justice um, and like quite a few students from urban studies were involved in that. So I was also curious about like the ways that um, student activism kind of influenced the shape of the curriculum, especially in the early days. And yeah, maybe some of the limits of like what uh, like activism at an institution like Stanford University can look like. Great. So tell us a little bit about the shape of the project. How did you decide sort of who to interview and what kind of questions to ask them? We began by recruiting a committee, an advisory board of uh, mostly affiliated faculty and I think a couple of alumni from the program to uh, share uh, the idea for this project and to get some of their suggestions for whom we should interview and what kinds of questions we should ask. And uh, we settled on uh, interviewing the faculty, especially those who had been involved in the early days of the program, um, and also in um, focusing on some of the students who had been involved in the origins of the program, uh, particularly those who were involved as both students and administrators. And one of the unique things we discovered about the Urban Studies Program was the ways that students really played a role, very active role in establishing and running the program in its early years. So we were able to speak with some of the students who had that uh, dual role as, as both students and uh, administrators. Great, anything else to add to that, um, Nova, in terms of the questions that you decided to ask or? Yeah, I guess also that we, we kind of used some of the people from the program to help track down some of the other people in the program and that it was an interesting part to get to see uh, those people like remake connections since a lot of it had been kind of staggered over time and that like they've lost touch as well. In terms of, you know, uh, finding the people to interview, I also want to give Nova a lot of credit for the detective work that she did. You know, so, some people we knew they were still here at Stanford, but other people really, you know, they changed their names, they moved around. There was, there was one figure in particular who I thought was a fellow at the Hoover Institution who had passed away. And then Nova discovered, no, 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 that was another person by of the same name who was at Stanford at roughly the same time, but was not the one involved in establishing urban studies. And there was somebody else with that name who was still alive and she found him. So, <laughs> um, you know, 
tremendous credit to to Nova for her work in uh, helping track down and contact the the people that we spoke to. And it was some really fun archival like detective work because the Daily has really extensive digital archives that I was able to kind of like go through all of the old papers and piece together like okay at what point did the organization have a different acronym and at what point did this person join um, so that I think that the person was Roy Childs who had the the Hoover Institution doppelganger that we eventually found his email at the university he used to work at. But that was like a particularly exciting moment was finally getting an email back from him and realizing that he was in fact <laughs> the person who we thought he was and he was also alive and willing to speak to us. Yes, and that was a wonderful interview and I'm sure he was delighted to get your email. Um, so let me ask you, as you think back on the interviews that you did for the project, are there are there any interview moments or or stories that really stood out for you? Louise Bay Waters was one of the students who was involved early on, and she had a, a really uh, personal story about her own life as a college student. Um, she was romantically involved as a, as a white woman. She was romantically involved with an African-American man. And that had kind of led her to African-American studies and, you know, what, what we might call sort of critical race studies. I mean, she was, she was really uh, interested in breaking down the kind of racist assumptions and and in exploring the the construction of race in American society and and through that she kind of came to uh, an interest in cities and in urban sociology and and she was one of the the uh, students who who helped to establish and and to run the program in in its early years and so uh, just hearing from her about about that that kind of personal stake that she she had in the program and um, the way some of the faculty helped her to understand her own situation that that I think that was a very powerful moment. I think I think another one that stuck with me was um, talking to Fred Stout, who has been a, a lecturer in our program for about 50 years. So Fred is someone I know pretty well at least as a professional colleague. Um, but talking to him about his youth and uh, he was very involved in anti-war mobilization, which I did not know. Somehow, you know, along the way, he sort of drifted <laughs> into the urban studies world. So it was it was really like a a, a bit of a window into into his his development. Nova, are there are there moments that that stay with you? I guess I was really struck by everyone's descriptions of what campus looked like in the late 60s and early 70s that some of the professors we talked to described coming to Stanford for the first time and noting that all of the windows were boarded up because of the, um, I guess, just like the volume of riots that were happening on campus, or I guess, like, I think the anti-war movement was the largest uh, contributor to that. Um, but it was interesting to see how, like the ways that some of that energy spilled out and didn't spill into the urban studies program that, um, as Professor Khan was mentioning, uh, a lot of the people who came through it kind of drifted into it in uh, <laughs> wayward ways, but that, um, yeah, it was interesting to see the resonances between um, the, the kind of overall political moment that was happening and the ways that that translated and sometimes failed to translate into uh, the, the program. Oral history is wonderful for documenting those kind of people's journeys and their trajectories, um, as well as for understanding a wider context that was influencing people. So that's really interesting. Are there any kind of patterns or anything you understand now about kind of Stanford history that um, that you didn't before embarking on this project? Maybe one overall impression that I took away was. Um, and, and Nova, I think, sort of hinted at this a little bit, was the, I think, the, the kind of ferment on campus, not, not only in the sense of like um, a lot of activism, some of which became violent and, and, and angry, but, but also uh, just a lot of, of ways of reimagining undergraduate education and a kind of atmosphere of flexibility, experimentation, um, student-led initiatives, 
you know, this idea of students really founding the program and, and creating it and setting up the courses and developing the curriculum, I feel like it would be very difficult and probably impossible for that to happen at Stanford now. The idea that there were just, you know, there were just so many possibilities at that time um, for, for new directions, new ideas, new initiatives to bubble up from, from all kinds of different places. I think maybe that was a, a, a takeaway for me. I, I also had a very similar takeaway that, um, that there was something kind of exciting about that um, ability to let education take form in the hands of the students, maybe a little bit more cynically was, um, I felt like I came away with a certain uh, understanding of the university's mission and maybe how that's changed over time, but also how that has uh, stayed the same about one of our interviewees did say that Stanford ultimately is here to reproduce elites and a little bit that was part of what um, I, I took from some of <laughs> the interviews here about the limits of what uh, students can expect uh, in terms of change from the university and curriculum. It's interesting to hear about how urban studies in some ways had and in other ways had not um, influenced people's future careers. You know, there, there were people particularly among the students or the former, the alumni that we spoke to, um, for some of them, it really had shaped a lot of their future trajectory. Um, I mean, Roy Childs became a, a sociologist who was very involved in community-based sociology and Louise Bay Waters really spent her whole career on issues of race and education. Um, so, so for some students, it was it was really formative. So I think that was that was a, a a takeaway as well from these interviews. And those students, the ones who were involved in founding the program, were so happy to hear that it was still going on. <laughs> I think there was just a lot of satisfaction. Um, some of them, you know, really hadn't been in touch with the program in a long time. So just to hear that it was still it was still a thing, that it had gotten more institutionalized over time, that it was really a well-established part of the university, I think they found quite uh, satisfying. Oh, wonderful. Well, congratulations to both of you and thank you on behalf of the Society and Stanford Libraries for the wonderful primary source archive that you've produced that I am sure scholars of, of all kinds of different histories will be making use of in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much, Natalie, and thanks, thanks to the society.